Well, it looks like the Pope's at it again. Check this out. Pope Francis criticizes fake Christians in weekly address. If you skip down to the second paragraph, it says, Speaking to thousands of faithful, Francis said fake Christians who claim to follow Jesus but who lead corrupt lives will meet a bad end. He called out mafioso Christians, saying they carry death in their soul and to others. While all that may be true, one has to keep in mind that the Pope of Rome is in fact the prophesied man of sin, and so he is going to mix truth with error so as to lure many into his camp. And so just as a Christian allows the Holy Spirit sent forth by the ever-living God of creation to move their tongue when speaking truth unto the people the Lord sends their way, so will the Pope use the unholy spirit of his dying God to speak lies unto the people sent his way. And so when he speaks of being a good Christian, he is actually talking about being a good Catholic. And anyone refusing to do as he teaches is therefore a fake Christian. And so we must do, as Jesus stated, when it comes to examining the fruits of those who claim Jesus Christ to be their Lord. I mean, after all, was it not prophesied by Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 that many will preach another Jesus whom we have not preached? And did not Jesus himself state in Matthew 24, 11 that many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many in our day? And so with that said, let's see if Roman Catholicism actually preaches the Jesus of the Bible, or do they in fact preach another Jesus, as Paul warned. And since the Bible says in Isaiah 8, 20, to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Let us look at what the Pope defines as Christianity via their own Catholic teachings. For if what he teaches is not in the Bible, then it has not the light of approval from heaven, and therefore not to be believed by obedient Christians. And so, the Popes of Rome teach that Mary was born without sin, yet there is not a single Bible verse to back that up. In fact, Mary herself said in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 and 7, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. And when speaking of Jesus, Mary also said in John chapter 2, verse 5, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. But the key here is, why is Mary calling Jesus her Savior when the Pope says she doesn't need one? The popes of Rome also teach that Mary is co-redeemer or co-redemptrix, yet you will not find a single Bible verse to back that up. In fact, when speaking of the name of Jesus Christ, it is plainly stated in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Well, the popes of Rome also declare that Mary is the queen of heaven, yet there is, again, not a single Bible verse to back that up. In fact, when speaking of a pagan goddess that the people bowed in worship to in Jeremiah's day, it says this in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18, The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. The popes of Rome also teach that every Catholic must address him as Holy Father. Yet, there is not a single Bible verse to back that up. In fact, there is one place in the Bible wherein the term Holy Father is actually used, but it's found in a prayer that Jesus Christ utters to his Father in heaven in John chapter 17, verse 11. It says this, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And so to call the Pope Holy Father is actually to blaspheme. And yes, prophecy does say the man of sin will not only blaspheme, he will demand all that bow to him to blaspheme as well. The popes of Rome teach all Catholics must go to their local priests to confess their sins, who will then forgive you of those sins. Yet there's not a single Bible verse to back that up either. In fact, we see to make such claims is also blasphemous, as Mark chapter 2, verse 7 clearly says, which is, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? The Pope teaches that erecting statues and even bowing before them in prayer is completely acceptable when not only is there not a single Bible verse to back that up, there are many that say not to do so. Notice commandment number two, which, by the way, was removed from all the Roman Catholic catechism books to hide the fact those statues are means by which to force their flock to sin before God. It says in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 6, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. 
Well, the popes also teach you must acknowledge the wafer they call the Eucharist that is made by the human hands of nuns as an actual temple of Jesus Christ incarnate, even though there's not a single Bible verse to back that up. In fact, it clearly says in Acts chapter 17, verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made by hands. And finally, the popes of Rome declare the Sabbath was changed from the seventh day to the first day of the week when even they themselves admit in writing there is not a single Bible verse to back that up. They actually use it as their power of authority over all Sunday-keeping churches, in fact. But what most people are unaware of, there are dozens of Bible verses from the Old to the New Testament that declare the Sabbath was and always will be kept by the obedient people of God because the Holy Spirit within them wrote his law upon their hearts as he promised so as to help them keep it. In fact, it says in Exodus 31 verse 16, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. No getting around that. And according to the Bible, Anyone declaring Jesus Christ as Lord is now considered Israel by the God of heaven. In fact, it says this in Romans chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. It says that they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And then Galatians 3.29 says, if ye be Christ's, you know, followers of Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And so what is that promise? Galatians 3 verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now I go into much more detail regarding the name of Israel on my website as well as in a video that I made some time ago for those that may have any questions on this doctrine. And the unchristian fruits of Roman Catholicism that I just listed here in this video they are nowhere near as many proofs that confirm Catholicism is not Christianity. I also have them listed online in much more detail for those that want additional information. The reason for this video is to declare unto all that have eyes to see and ears to hear, Roman Catholicism is exactly as it was prophesied to be. They preach another Jesus, or in today's language, Roman Catholicism is in fact fake Christianity. Thank you for watching. God bless.